Mm. What we're doing today is uh, I like I had an uh, arm piece for my board costume, and I made patterns. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys really quickly here. Hold on, move some stuff around real quick. I did the uh, the typical uh, duct tape pattern. This is my pattern I made. And of course, I did the aluminum foil duct tape pattern to make it, which worked out pretty well. And they were a bit short, and so I wanted to do is extend them. So I took the original pattern to extend them a little bit. Um, and my elbow I thought was a bit short, so I made this a little bit bigger. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this onto foam. Now, this is a case over here. These guys laid them up here in the seal. There. there we go. That. That. And. Get that. Now get old straight pens. So, guys, I'm out here working. Somebody today, I got a great question I wanted to share with you guys. Somebody just, uh, tweeted me about when making patterns or doing your duct tape foil patterns where do you figure out how to do your lines to cut um, I always try to like when you're looking at something you always know how far foam is going to bend at least I, I think I do over time but is that once you cut everything out and you lay it down on tape or you lay a paper pattern or a foil pattern down on the table trying to lay it flat if it doesn't lay flat it curls up you have to cut a dart in it so the kind of the, the pattern you're making will pretty much tell you what where you have to cut. Let's trace this really quick here, guys. Hold on. All right. James asks, "What am I making today? I'm making a board arm." As a matter of fact, uh, James, you guys can come back and see right there in the background. That's my Borg body, which we'll get into that later. But right now, I'm doing the Borg arm. That's what I'm doing. So now, I got this traced. Take this guy's out. Let's go ahead and cut this guy out. Now again, when I pull these things off on your patterns, it's always good to label what they are. So... That's my elbow. I mean, granted, I know that, but just for safety, just to. That's my elbow. Got that? This is the. Uh, I write. This is my right. So I put a big R in there because I know this is the right. Because when you make some things, you get confused. It helps. Take this off. This is also right. Let's go ahead and cut some foam. Got my blade, got my crinsaw sharpener, which you guys can go to my website and buy. These things come in handy. Keep my blade sharp. All right. As a matter of fact, now look at these guys, these registration marks. Let's make them a little bit bigger. Okay, same. Make them a little bigger because I know I'm going to go back later and drum uh, the edges off a little bit. So let's make these a little bigger. Because my plan is I'm going to take the edges down a little bit on these guys. And when you do that, you kind of lose them a little bit. So real quick, let's do this really quick here, guys. And I'll be right with you. We got 12 people right now. We. Okay, got it. I think that's why it kind of focuses more on that. All right. What I've done, guys, these registration marks, I need to put them on the side like this. I'm going to continue them down. I know what you're thinking. Why is he doing that? Because I will. this will all make sense in the long run. I'm just kind of go like this. Because what I have to do is I'm going to go back here and take these edges down a little bit. Just This is part of the look for what I'm going for for this Borg. And uh, on this stream, guys, you'll see what I'm up to. Okay? So, you, know, you see what I'm doing? I'm knocking this down 
but I'm still I still have my registration mark on the edge because this is my contact point. So I'm not going to sand this all off. I'm going to keep a little bit of a strip right here. This is my contact point. I just want to knock off that leading edge. But I'm telling you right now, guys, this turns out this is just too rough. It's just taking it's not doing it clean enough. I'm gonna change my bit here real quick. Tell you what, we're gonna go back with the heavier um, grit one, knock it all down, and go back in with my stone one and clean it up really quick. Okay, so let's do that really quick. All right, here we go. So now I swap these over. I'm going to go back and hit these edges again, which I know is not nearly exciting, but uh, it's a necessary evil. All right? Here we go. What we're going to do now is I want to heat form these guys. I'm going to put a little curve to them before I put these together. Once again, I have my registration marks all the way to the sides. They're all nice and flat. And I can glue them together, but what I want to do is kind of give them a nice curl on them first. So this is where I come in with my Evil Ted Foam Anvil. Okay, now, for example, this elbow, it's nice and flat, but I want to put a curve to it. So got my heat gun. See, you can go like this a little bit, a little bit of a curve on it. And also for me, I like to kind of pull into it with my fingers. A little bit. There. Ah, push on that. And see now, nice curved piece. So it's going to be my elbow. All right. Got that. Now I'm gonna move on to the uh, the bigger pieces here as well. Same thing. Heat this up. Curl a little bit. This is why I like the dome to be a little bit smaller because it helps. Because when you're doing this. Foam has a tendency to snap back a little bit, so I kind of go a little bit smaller on it. See? Get this nice curve to it. As a matter of fact, for an ad effect, I want a little bit more of a curl in these guys, too. So let's do that really quick. All right. This is. um. I like uh, with the heat foam do a little bit about these curls and curves because on this Borg armor, even though they're like man and machine, they very have may have a very organic feel to them. So, so I like a little bit of that bulbous around. Try to give it that, that sculptural look because this is where my elbow is going to go. Okay, got that. So we have this done. The elbow. Set these guys aside. Now the top part of the arm. Okay, excuse me. Copy break. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. It's funny, I didn't used to be a coffee drinker until I started working at uh, Ham Prop Room when we get up so damn early and be groggy, you're forced to drink coffee. And now I'm a coffee drinker. All right, here we go. All right. Yeah. See, once again, when it's still hot, kind of roll it on my roller. Now, some people use their knee, and you know, it's like you can definitely do that, but I find with the uh, my acrylic dome, you can just really control it. You can kind of force certain spots. There it be. Now, I realized too on this design, the wrist is going to be really narrow. So I might have to keep it portion of it not glued, but we're going to see what. Let's kind of see where we're going real quickly. Now, we got this all going. We're going to glue. So let's get a little closer for that. Now, this is my elbow. I'm going to attach it to this. And this is why I made those registration marks. As a matter of fact, <laughs> again, I have to go back and I can see where I was. I can do this so I can make sure I can see them when I'm gluing. Where's my glue?
Great invention, guys, the glue pot. If you don't have a glue pot, I highly recommend you go to my site, eviltedsmith.com, and get, <laughs> go to the shop and go to Amazon and buy you one. The reason I like them, some, you don't have to have a you can just have a mason jar and a, and a chip brush, but I like it because it just um, comes in handy. So, because it's easy to work with. Now, I'm just going to put glue on my edges inside. Now, my elbow, same thing. Okay. So before I do all this, let me get the hair dryer. Speed this up a little bit, guys, with the hair dryer. Now, you guys can see, here's my elbow. I'm going to line these guys up. Get my marks. You guys can see my marks here. I'm going to bend it open a little bit, line the marks up. Ooh, wait, get that. I got that. Make good contact. Up on the other side. Oop, can I get in there? Ah, come on. Okay, and there. See? There it is. See? There's my elbow. Now you look, see how very kind of organic looking it is? And this is why I want to go back and bevel the edges because I want to have this seam in here, this like uh, crease inside there. And that's why I had to go through and bevel the edges. But you don't want to do it all the way because you still need your contact points to so glue this thing together. So now that's glued in there. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> so what we do is going to move on to this guy next. Um, and I'm realizing this is going to be tapered, so I might not glue to a certain point. Uh, I have to keep it split. Because this is going to, see how it tapers? There's no way I'm going to be able to get my wrist through there. So what I'll probably do is um, or maybe not. Hmm. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm not only going to glue so far. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do this with a strap. I think I'm going to glue these guys and keep this, this part open so I can at least get my wrist through it. So I'll glue this side. I'll leave this open. I'm going to take some webbing here real quickly. And this webbing I'm putting in here just for reinforcement because what I'm going to do is for stress points, somebody's going to be pulling a lot, it's going to break. So, and I find that when you're going to do this, it's good just to kind of rough it up. So, I know where I'm going to be here real quick, guys. Where the strap is going to be. Let's make a quick mark here, right here. There. And I've always found that when you guys are gluing stuff to this foam, where the diamond place stuff is, you want to rough this up. If you try to put glue in this directly sometimes, it just pops out. All right, here we go. Lay down some paper because I don't like getting barge on my table. It's some nasty stuff. So, and also, too, it is time for some gloves because this is going to get messy. So, got gloves. Got it. Now, because what I want to do, same thing, so I want to put uh, some barge from it. Now, once again, on this, on this webbing, one coat is not going to be enough. I'm just going to brush it, let it soak in. And meanwhile, while it's doing that, I'm going to put a secondary coat because webbing and fabric always have a tendency to soak up your glue. So, so I'm putting barge right here where I'm going to put the strap. Okay. Here's my strap. And I have my spot where I'm going to put it right here, halfway point. Nice bond. Right there. Now, before I stick these guys together, 
I gotta make sure everything lines up. So got my marks. You guys can see them right there. I'm lining them up like so. Now pull a little close together. There you go. Okay. Now the reason this is here is because this is gonna be my open point, my opening. It's gonna be a lot of stress on it. So I know for a fact if this will open up for me, I don't want to worry about uh, ripping. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and close this backside off. See what this looks like. Line it up. All right. See? There it is. And this is, this is quite a bit of a taper, so I realized that there's no way I'm going to be able to get my, uh, you guys can see this taper. That's why I have this opening. So I'm going to go put my hand through. It's like so. Like that. Ta-da. I got my elbow right there. Not bad. And I got to pull my hand back through. <laughs> okay. But I'm looking at this now. What I really could do, I could put a little. This is. I want it to be a little bit curved. I could have heated this more. I want this more of a curve. So, but now this is on here. I can still do that. So I'm just going to heat this up a little bit and stretch it out. It's nice and hot. Keep going. Open on the side, but I have a stress point in the webbing. So one side's glued, the other side's open. So then, for the, uh, I'm sorry, is that right side today? My arm, here we go. Ta da! As you can see now, this is my arm. <laughs> okay, it's, it's got, it's tapered on the wrist, it comes together inside of a slit. And I like to do the slit on the inside, easier to hide. But it's foam and it's going to hold its shape. So once you coat this, seal it, it's going to have a little enough to flex open to get your hand through, but still tapered. So that's kind of like a thing. And I wanted to go up for the, for the arm, for the board, because I'm going to have some gloves on and stuff, but I want to do that. So there's my elbow, guys. Ta-da! Mission accomplished. Okay. I have the other arm, which this is the left arm, and this is the board arm piece. And it's got it, it's like same with the elbow thing going right here. But my plan is I want to have it because the board to this kind of big mechanical looking thing. So I had the two, and what I did was I, uh, I made some notches back here to make it a little more interesting looking. So what I have right here, and uh, I can see I started beveling it. I started doing it with a knife, and it's kind of messing them up a little bit. They don't look that great. So I want to do this and glue it on, but I want to knock these guys down. I want to put like a, a little bevel on them. All right. Hey guys, you guys can see it now. What I'm trying to do, the bevels. Once again, now, if I had thought about this ahead of time, I probably would have cut these bevels first, rolled it, didn't. <laughs> but it was one of those things where it's kind of making this up as I go. So it's one of those things about always helping to design things ahead of time. But being a Borg, I was kind of having fun, and I made this. I was like, oh, wouldn't this be cool if? And then when I thought about, it, oh, I have to do this but normally since it's foam it's super easy to do just so not that hard to do all right one well, of my favorite foam tools is a propane torch and once again this is not for everybody because you don't like using you can always use a heat gun but for me i like the torch because it's quick and it's fast and i got kind of used to it i mean you always work at the prop house so we had to work everything fast and this was a quick way of doing it but it's a finesse, and I got quite good at it. And so what it does is it kind of softens everything up, all the fuzzies and the weird sandy marks. It, get rid it gets rid of them really quickly. So I'm going to do that with the torch. So I adjust the heat, like so. Then back a little bit, because you guys can watch. And then take this foam down, maybe like so. so. All right, done, now. <laughs> Don't you guys can see it or not, but uh, should I do it? It just, it just does a nice, sorry, 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 just cleans all the stuff up on it, makes it a little bit nicer. Now that we've done this, I'm going to rough this stuff on the inside because I'm going to glue this. 
I'm going to glue this part onto it. So what I need to do is, once again, the stuff on the inside doesn't like glue so much. It kind of pops off. So I'm going to take a sanding drum and rough this up a little bit. This is my Sharpie. I'm going to make some marks so I know where the glue is going to go. Let's get that, and I got the barge in here. But the trick is now with this, with barge, is that if this is the dry, you try to get it, it'll stick, and you won't be able to get it in. So what you have to do is you have to put this in while it's still wet. Got it while it's still wet, and I kind of stuff it in like this, just like that. I got it all lined up. See where I want it, because if you wait for this to dry, you will not be able to get it in there. Okay. So what I do is I do this, get it all lined up, okay? I got glue on both sides, and because once again, you have to do this when it's wet, okay? I'm gonna pin it there, and pin it here. And now, before I stick these guys down, I got glue on both sides. I'm gonna take a hair dryer. All right. See now, I hit this with a hair dryer and these edges. See them standing up. Since I've done that, it's dry, so I can apply these guys down. See, and they will stick. And they will stick. So I got glue on both sides. Once again, barge cement. You can when you have a piece that has to slide to another piece, you can use barge while it's wet. As long as you coat. A uh, good coat on the inside of both of it, like nice and even, then, and then push it in and let it semi dry. And it's a little trick I learned when I was working at the shop to get things done quickly because those tabs will hold it. See, now I got my, uh, and now I have my, uh, my left Borg arm. <laughs> but it's got the, uh, the attachments down here. You guys can see the, uh, the detail. I've got my elbow. And of course, this is going to get uh, more uh, detailed things on it for now. But that's all attached on it. And now I know it's glued on. It's not coming off. Thank you so much for joining me today. I was able to make uh, some board parts today. I was able today to finish up and did my, my right arm. Got that. Turned out nice. Got the delt that the, uh, I was able to do the, the taper with the strap so it won't rip. Got that done. Uh, got my board left arm. Which is going to get more detailed stuff on it later. Um, that pretty much wraps up, guys, today's stream. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are new to this, um, you can also go to my website, evilTedSmith.com, guys, and get on my mailing list where I do uh, Tip Tuesday. And I'm working on a fan photo Friday. But I haven't got up running yet, but we'll have that soon. Um, I have patterns for sale in my store, too. And also, I just started my YouTube um, funding. Uh, support funding button. So if you guys, anybody out there want to throw me a buck, I'd be greatly appreciated <laughs> so I can just stay in my shop all day and keep doing this, guys. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you back next time right here on the Evil Ted channel.